Good evening and welcome to the Council meeting of the 27th of July 2020. This meeting is being conducted in COVID-19 protocols in place for social distancing and isolation. The meeting is being conducted electronically using Zoom and is being live streamed on Facebook Live. Town Hall is closed to the public and the most up-to-date meeting package is on the Town of Kentville website. The public may send questions directly to the CAO's email at krice at kenfield.ca. This meeting is called to order. Have all of the councillors received and reviewed their meeting packages? Does any member of council have information pertaining to a matter before this council which has not been publicly circulated? I will remind members of council that we are in decision making mode and we should be mindful of our decision making wheel. We have committed to making balanced and respectful decisions and adhering to our code of conduct. We will be voting by poll. The chair will call your name and ask how say you. This method permits us to verbally record your vote. Are there any conflict of interest issues we should be aware of before the meeting commences? CEO Rice, could you please take the roll call? Yes, Your Worship. I all, their, all your councillors are there with the exception of uh, Councillor John and staff would be um, Director Gentleman and Recording Secretary myself. Excellent, thank you very much. You have before you the proposed agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? I have uh, one deletion under new business item 7B departmental COVID-19 reports and one addition to item number nine in camera item C personnel. Your work if I may um, just uh, in camera just uh, two items one is property and one is legal just updates. Okay, so we will put, uh, we'll change that then. Item C will be up CAO updates. And item D will be personnel. Thank you. Mm. We'll move to approve the agenda. Thank you. Seconder? Second. Second. Thank you. Councillor Bolland? All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried, thank you. You have before you the council meeting minutes from July 13th, 2020. Are there any errors or omissions with the minutes as distributed? If not, uh, the minutes are approved as distributed. If yes, the recording secretary will annotate the minutes in red and the annotated minutes will be added to the electronic meeting file as approved. All good? All right. Moving on to our public hearing meeting of July 22nd. Um, are there any errors or omissions with the minutes as distributed? None? All right, moving right on. So we, uh, we now have uh, unfinished business. The first item under unfinished business is our noise bylaw second draft. So you will recall that at our last meeting, uh, we provided uh, feedback uh, to, uh, to staff and uh, they took all of our recommendations, uh, both the verbal ones that uh, we did at the meeting and any that were uh, sent in uh, in writing and uh, they have provided us with a second draft. Uh, so you are or were asked as part of your homework uh, for meeting package uh, to review the second draft. Uh, so we have an option here. We can either provide more red lines back to staff or if you are satisfied with this second draft, we can move to first reading. So I will, uh, I will poll uh, the members of council. Uh, Councillor uh, Maxwell. I'm good. Yes, it's good. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bolland. You're muted. No, green light. That's good work, staff. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's got good. Oh, CEO seems to be leaving us. A uh, deputy mayor. 
Did you want to review further or did you want to go off to first reading? No, first reading's good. It's, it's okay. good. Uh, Councilor Pulsifer. Uh, first reading is fine with me. Yep. Okay, and uh, Councilor Savage. I have a few items. Um, I was very late in uh, sending an email out this afternoon. And okay. uh, so just a, a couple of items. Um, so on page two of six, we're uh, under 3.0 under scope. Um, I think where it talks about making any noise or combination of noises uh, measured, there needs to be something there that denotes continuous. So that's the first item. Uh, the other item is 3.2, where it talks about making any noise or combination of noises and the measurements, the decibel levels. Um, so in terms of between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., that seemed high. Uh, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., rather than seeing it at 70, I'd rather see it at 55. Um, just referencing back Truro, New Minus, Wolfel, and Windsor, they're 55 or less, less. Uh, and most towns are between 45 and 55 in particular at night. Um, Nova Scotia Environment and Labor uh, is also not over 65. So I'm, I'm not really sure where the 90 and the 70 came from and that's, that's perfectly fine. I just would like to see, I would like to see the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. at 55, the 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. maybe somewhere between 60 and 90. I uh, provided the document uh, to the CAO uh, with regards to the Ontario uh, uh, Department of Environment. These are the numbers that, uh, that they have used for weighted sound. Okay. Just CAO, did you want to uh, expand on that uh, at all? Um, well, we did have quite a bit of conversation around this um, because we were trying very hard to make sure that we put something in place that's actually enforceable if mm -hmm. if we plan to to do you know put it in there's no point in putting it in place if we can't um, enforce it and when we look at things like um, traffic noise so moderate rainfall um, is listed as about 50 decibels um, and, and your dishwasher, 60 decibels. We checked the, um, the noise, uh, so we were in the conference room with the air conditioner and the decibel reading on that was 45. Um, city traffic is somewhere around the 70 and, and a restaurant, if you were sitting in a restaurant. So then we looked at during the day, um, things that normally happen as part of our day, like a lawn mower, for example, you know, depending on the size of property, a lawn mower can run for two to three hours. Um, you know, I, I know that, you know, and, and, and the weed whacker, Again, they're around nine, they're 90 decibels. So we tried to keep it so that it was realistic during the daytime hours so that people could, you know, use lawn mowers and use weed whackers and, and those types of things. A chainsaw, one of the things we considered is that some people uh, bring their, their wood that they have for the winter they like to cut it themselves. So they have it delivered in, you know, an eight foot length and then they, they cut it themselves. So it's only a short amount of time, maybe a week or two, but potentially they could be working at it, you know, all day. Um, and we didn't really think that we'd want to send, you know, someone out. Um, that, that's around 100 decibels. A, a car horn is 110 decibels. So again, you know, we, we tried to, to look at levels that were 
realistic and enforceable. But um, I mean, obviously, staff are open to whatever levels that council should determine uh, what they they mm -hmm. want. We we did um, we did have a discussion with the police. Um, there was one issue that has come to light with regards to. Um, uh, a, a continuous noise level on a neighbor's property and um, you know I did speak with three of the four I believe officers that had gone um, and investigated that complaint and and they didn't feel that there was um, an issue there um, but as I said we just tried to look at everyday life and how enforceable this could be but but staff are open to council's wishes. So I, I would feel comfortable at the 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. at the 90 decibels, but I would like to see the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. reduced to 55 and that it refer to continuous. Uh, I think the continuous piece needs to be there uh, during the evening, like during the night, the nighttime hours. So, so I'll look for sort of a definition of continuous um, noise. Like, a, a, okay. we need to define it more. Sure. Okay. Okay. Councillor Maxwell, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, the sixty to to ninety. Um, sixty, I think, is a hard one to do in, in the evening. I think the 70 is, I don't want to go up to 90. I think that that's really, really high. That would really disturb sleep. I think if we're up to 90, um, 70 is a good, uh, I like that mid range there. You know, people are trying to sleep at night. You don't want to have a lot of noise going on. I have a building behind me that you know, if there was parties going on, till, you know, all night, I certainly wouldn't want it up to, to 90 decibels and or, or even 80. And uh, I'm a light sleeper. That would that would really bother me. And down as low as 55, I think, is uh, we're getting into a little bit of uh, territory there where we're into everyday noise um, during the day. So um, I'm quite comfortable with those levels that that uh, staff has come up with. It does talk about um, the applicable A-weighted continuous noise levels in uh, 3.2. I don't know if uh, Councillor Savage missed that or not, but um, it does talk about continuous noise there. So um, I just think if we go too low, we're, we're interfering with day-to-day -day living and uh, during the day, and if we're up too high at night, we're interfering with sleep. So for me, those are, good mid-range, mid-range ones. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Balland, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Worship. I, I endorse uh, Councillor Savage's comments. And I guess the key issue is the after 10 o'clock noise level. And again, the word continuous is in there, but um, it continues to me at 10 o'clock at night as a neighbor who's got their music up too loud or a backyard party that's keeping people awake. So I think we need to tweak that number. That being said, is there a commitment then for us to purchase from budget uh, a uh, sound decibel reader unit or a source? CAO? Um, so it wasn't included in this budget. Uh, um, and I right now I'm in the process of researching. I've asked um, a couple of uh, towns what their piece of equipment is and, and there, because there's there's the the decibel reader, and then there's also uh, the um, a calibration unit that goes with it. There's two pieces, um, so I I really don't have a, a number yet as to what what that would cost. I think that go setting decibel levels, we have to purchase that, and we have to go by that because, um, as you well know you can put a decibel reader on your phone. And we actually did experiment with that. Um, the staff, uh, three of us put decibel readers on our phones and we measured the same noises and we were coming up with different readings. So, so in order for it to be, you know, because we, we will get the calls that say, you know, my phone says that this is it. 
but if we go up with with a proper decibel reader that's been calibrated then um, there's where your enforcement comes from so um, I don't believe I, I'm hearing somewhere maybe around the three thousand dollar mark but I can't really confirm that so um, we're, we're still looking into that okay uh, Councillor Savage thank you worship uh, so to Councillor Maxwell's point around, so where it says exceeds the applicable A weighted continuous noise, le noise levels, I didn't realize the A weighted referred to the actual decibel reading, but now I understand that it does. So that, so that should be fine. Um, uh, between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. though, I'm still at the 55. That's, that's where I'm at with it. Thank you. Does any member of council have an issue if we amend that 7255? Uh, Councillor Maxwell. That's 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. You're on mute. Okay, so I, I'm not sure everybody's understanding this, but so between 10 p.m. and 7 p.m., um, you want to go to 55. That's uh, incredibly, incredibly low. 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. To 7 a.m. So from 10 o'clock at night till 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We want low, we want low noise levels. Okay. All right. I see, I see what you're saying there. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Um, Solicitor, no, no, no. Solicitor, please. <laughs> you're on mute. No, you're not. Your phone is on mute. Okay, there. Jason's just unmuted me. You can hear me now? Yes. You know, yep. My phone wasn't on mute, but it's fixed. <laughs> the, um, uh, so, Last time this was before council, we talked about whether different areas of town needed to be identified. So just on this discussion of noise levels at night, I do issue the caution that you have certain areas of town where uh, reefer units may be right, running on refrigeration trucks all night, for example. Right now, this bylaw is drafted to apply equally everywhere in town. So I just caution you uh, to turn your minds to that. But there were there were a number of other smaller items that I raised with the CAO, um, and, but I was just waiting to see where this was headed here this evening. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. You have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, my my only uh, issue with lowering to 55 decibels uh, would be I think we want to have a definitive level where we don't have um, everybody calling in because, you know, there's, there's some, if, if uh, I believe the CAO said uh, dishwasher 65, um, you know, if, if you've got it too low, then anybody can call in for any reason. Whereas if you've got it just a little bit higher and make sure that it says continuous, um, it, it actually has to be uh, something that, that's bothering people, not just um, you know, uh, a nuisance uh, or someone, you know, trying to be a pain. Thank you. So you would recommend a 65? 65 or keep it at 70. Uh, Councillor Savage, your hand is up. Thank you, Worship. Um, it, yeah, and I think when, when I'm talking about lowering it to 55 and you, you say about dishwasher being in that 60 to 65 area, um, you got to remember though, you've got somebody in the next house over and even though it's between 60 and 65 decibels um, in their home, the next door neighbor probably isn't going to hear that at the same level, right? So that's, that's sort of where I'm, I'm going with this. And I know that I'm pushing it, so, um, it, but everybody has their own, whatever everybody's comfortable with, but I, I'm, I'm comfortable at that. So you're comfortable at the 55? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did we want to push this back to staff or did we want to vote on the 
Councillor uh, Maxwell, I see you. <laughs> well, let's 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 vote on fifty-five or sixty-five. That's my okay. suggestion. Uh, Councillor Balland, you had your hand. Your hand is up. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Um, through to Councillor Savage. Um, what are the numbers again for similar sized municipalities such as ours? I think you mentioned. Yep. Wolf Tr uh, Truro, New Minus, Wolfville, and Windsor are all 55 uh, or less. And Wolfville included, 55 or less? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so 65 and 55. Councillor Maxwell, how say you? <laughs> Do you want me to start with someone else? <laughs> well, Deputy Mayor uh, said 65, so I put him down for 65. 65. I'll say 60. Yeah. You'll say 60? 65. Okay. <laughs> 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 Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, 65. Uh, Councillor Bolland. 55. Councillor Savage. 55. And I'm a 65. So the 65s have it. So therefore, we will proceed with 65 on the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, the amendment to paragraph 3.1 to include the word continuous as requested by uh, Councillor Savage. Even though continuous is in 3.2, it makes sense to also have it in 3.1. Solicitor? Your Worship, just on that, I'd raise that with the CAO. It may be that I don't understand enough about how uh, the A-weighted calculation is done, but my question was, what is continuous? And, if, and the CAO did mention earlier that perhaps uh, uh, some work needs to be done around that. I'm not sure if she can address that now, but if it's not clear what continuous means and how that is measured objectively, um, in my opinion, this bylaw is not ready to be adopted. Okay, thank you. CAO, do you have a response so, to that? Well, I, I actually don't because um, Solicitor Matart just brought it to my attention just probably 45 minutes ago. Um, so um, uh, if, you know, I mean, it's certainly um, no issue for it to come back to staff and just to fine tune it. Um, if that's uh, council's wishes, I'm open to, I'm open to, like I say, whatever you like. Okay, so we have, uh, we have that amendment uh, potentially for 3.1, depending on what response you get on, uh, on A-weighted sound. Um, the 10 p.m. Uh, will go to 65 as voted on by council for an, a, a red line. Uh, the, the solicitor has brought up uh, the idea of areas of town. So for example, in uh, the business park, we would want it to be suitable that uh, refrigeration trucks could run continuously there. Um, so I guess uh, since the solicitor has told us this is not ready for uh, passing, we'll push it back to staff and we expect to see it in September. So thank you for your work on that uh, this evening. And we don't need a motion to push it back to staff because it was uh, it was a draft we were uh, we were provided with. So our next uh, unfinished business is uh, second reading uh, of the land use bylaw for schools in R two zones. So there is a recommendation from staff to approve second reading of the VCLA request for an amendment to the LUB to include schools in the R2 residential zones subject to specific criteria. If we could have that moved. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Maxwell. And seconded, uh, Councillor Savage. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve second reading of the VCLA request for an amendment to the LUB to include schools in the R2 residential zones subject to specific criteria. Is there any discussion? Question. 
The question is on adoption of the motion to approve second reading of the VCLA request for amendment to the LUB to include schools in R2 residential zones subject to specific criteria. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Bolland, how say you? Yes. Councillor Maxwell, how say you? Yes. Councillor Pulsifer, how say you? Councillor Andrew was not, uh, per, is not permitted to uh, vote on this as he was not pr present at the public hearing and I realize he's not present here this evening, but just following, uh, following through. Councillor Savage, how say you? Yes. And I say yes. The motion is carried. Our next uh, piece of business is second reading on the land use bylaw for municipal election signage. And there is a request from council to approve second reading of the amendment to the LUB for municipal election signs. If I could have that moved, please. So moved. Councillor Ballin, thank you. And a seconder. Second. Councillor Maxwell, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council approve second reading of the amendment to the LUB for municipal election signs. Is there any discussion? Councillor Savage. Thank you, Worship. Um, so uh, obviously we had our public meeting the other night and I know that there was only one, um, one item of correspondence in from uh, Jillian York. Um, since that time I've had an opportunity to speak with uh, a number of other people, um, some folks that are maybe interested in running for council or just their overall feelings on um, folks that want to put their name forward. Um, some folks have mentioned, uh, similar to what Jillian had mentioned about the, the timing of um, limiting signage during an election, um, and that it's critical, you know, for those kind of who want to put their name uh, into, uh, to, um, you know, vie in the next election. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm torn with this one, in a sense, because I, I think it's important to give people the flexibility to put signage out, particularly if their names aren't known. Um, certainly during COVID times, I think campaigning uh, may present uh, a very different experience. Um, not sure how, how folks will feel uh, for the, us to come to the door and see them. I, I don't know that yet, whether we'll be wearing masks, et cetera. Uh, and I just think, you know, in terms of the environment, I, we're, we're all conscious of that. So. I, I just think people should have the flexibility to have some signs out and maybe they limit it to 10, maybe they limit it to 15, who knows. But I just, I feel stronger and stronger about that people should have that flexibility and make that informed decision themselves and, um, and be respectful of the environment while at the, at the same time. Thank you. Councillor Maxwell, I see your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Um, I really don't think we can be respectful of the environment when we're littering the town with, uh, with signs. Um, there are many ways, many ways that we can get our name out. Um, we can set up uh, Facebook pages. A uh, number of us have done that on social media. We can do flyer runs um, in the local flyers. We can, we can put a, 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 you know, a page out so that everybody can see it. Um, we can do telephone. Uh, calls to people within town. Um, there's many ways. I have also talked to some people who are running in the next election and they don't have a problem with uh, with having six signs out. And, uh, you know, I think that everybody had an opportunity to speak at the public hearing. We heard from one person and, uh, you know, I think that speaks volumes. So, you know, if we couldn't get ourselves, you know, to make a make a voice if if candidates couldn't come to us and tell us you know this is this is what we want then uh, you know I'm more inclined than ever to say six signs and use the other options that are available to you why don't we lead the way in the in the environment and uh, instead of littering our town other towns seem to be able to do it Wolfel seems to be able to do it close by no signs there and yet they seem perfectly capable of electing a council. And, uh, and it's done in, in other uh, areas as well. So there's all kinds of ways where there's a will, there's a way. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Councillor Bolland. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Just to echo, echo her comments. I mean, 
you know, this initiative was brought to us after Christmas. It's not new or the last minute. <clears throat> and again, only one submission uh, by a citizen against this. Let's show some leadership here. Um, we value social media in the last turn, uh, flyers, et cetera. Um, there are a lot of cities across the country that have no signs of any sort through legislation. Um, Yarmouth has just passed theirs, as you all know. Um, so, you know, it's the right thing to do. Have six signs, you can make them as big as you want. Um, but still, um, I think we need to show some leadership here. And again, only one objection of over 6,000 residents. I think uh, it's been looked upon very favorably. So let's do it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Savage, I see your hand up, but uh, before you speak again, uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, throw my, uh, my words out there, I guess. Uh, so I, I, I guess I'm going to say that I don't support uh, this amendment uh, because it does not support the advice we were given by our solicitor. Uh, we did request his input and we actually paid for that advice. and. Uh, and uh, it has, um, it, there, there's a reason we ask, we ask for advice and, uh, and I think that uh, it behooves us uh, to follow it, especially when there have not been the challenges that we see coming uh, with this, uh, uh, this bylaw as, um, as we look at uh, provincial and federal elections as well, not just from the municipal uh, perspective. Um, additionally, I don't think that this amendment is in the best interest of democracy or the advice provided by the uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Last week, Porter offered uh, this advice to candidates running in municipal elections. Use signs, printed material, telephone, social media, or virtual op options to engage with the constituents rather than canvassing door to door. So I think that uh, there's plenty of, uh, of information out there. And I think we all have to make our personal choices whether we put signs out or not. I was uh, on a, uh, a webinar last week and uh, there was a candidate uh, who ran last year in Berwick for the first time and he told us he had 54 signs. Um, I thought that was a bit excessive, but uh, you know what? It, uh, it worked for him. Him. So I just, uh, I throw that out there. Uh, Councillor Savage, uh, you had something else to say. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, it's just a couple of other notes I had around it. You know, I, I um, similar to what you had said, Your Worship, that, you know, choice is crucial in democracy. I think fairness is key. I look at the advice that we received through Solicitor Matars. Um, I listened to uh, a podcast here not too long ago and Mayor Savage was quoted and he talks about that he, he didn't have signs in the last election. Most of them didn't have signs in the last election, but that was their choice not to do so. It wasn't legislated for them not to do so. Um, so with or, or without this passing, I think that we all, uh, anybody who is looking at putting their name in to run for council has that decision to limit their signs and to be more environmentally, environmentally conscious. So thank you. Thank you. Uh Councillor Maxwell, I see your hand up, but Councillor Pulsifer uh, has not spoken yet, so she uh, she moves to the front of the line. Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make an addition uh, to some uh, to the comments um, referencing using uh, Facebook as a way of campaigning, and I, I don't feel that that reaches um, a fair demographic of, of our people, uh, especially perhaps seniors that aren't on Facebook and there are some, you know, some people that just don't use Facebook. So they would definitely be, I believe, put at a disadvantage uh, by not, um, you know, by not seeing signs around uh, through the town and, and neighborhood. Um, it, I, I just feel limiting those signs uh, does put new faces and new candidates at a disadvantage. I, I, I just do. And um, uh, yeah, that's my comment. All right. Thank you. Councilor Maxwell, please. Thank you. I don't, uh, I don't know if, if people understand that when you use Facebook, you can boost your posts and pay a little bit of money and have those posts directed to everybody in Kenful that has a Facebook uh, account. And so you can, get, you can get the word out to every single person that way. We're not, we're not uh, taking signs away. 
we're limiting the number of signs. So yes, you can still have signs. Saying limit the number of signs, it's the environmentally correct thing to do. Use the other options that are available. So if you, you know, you can, uh, like I said, you can telephone, you can use the flyer service. Heaven knows they need some uh, income as well as the sign people. And so there are other options to say that we have to litter the town with signs to get elected is absolutely incorrect. What we're doing is exactly what the minister has said for us to do, use a variety of options, not just stick to one option and litter your towns. He didn't say that. Um, at all. And so I think, you know, we have to lead the way. There has to be, and, and due respect to the solicitor, but there seems to be other communities that seem to be able to get this done. And so, you know, I don't know if that needs more research, Mr. Solicitor, or, or what, but when we're no different than the people in Wolfville or the people in Yarmouth or the people in Ontario or anywhere else. Um, if they can get her done, we should be able to get her done. And, uh, and so, yes, I, I feel very much that we need to limit, we need to take an action here. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, solicitor. solicitor. Your Worship, I wasn't going to comment until Councillor Maxwell made those comments. Councillor Maxwell knows well that the town of Wilfield does not regulate this. This has been talked about several times. So I want to make sure that nobody misunderstands the facts because they have been misstated, Councillor Maxwell. Halifax does not regulate this. You know from in-camera discussions that we will not talk about here what the rationale is behind the legal opinion. You also know um, from in-camera discussions what another municipal unit was told from a legal perspective. Council gets to choose what it does. It makes its bed, it lies in it. The, uh, the legal is simply an opinion provided to you and you make your decisions in that context. But those comments, Councillor Maxwell, about the legal opinion, with all due respect, are out of line. Thank you. Thank you, Solicitor. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you haven't spoken, so you come to the head of the line. Uh, go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a, a quick response back for for uh, uh, to uh, Councillor Maxwell, and and I guess Councillor Bowen as well. Um, I, I think it's it's a good idea, but I don't think the rationale of uh, don't put 12 signs or 15 signs or 20 signs out there yet. Uh, let's let's get a thousand flyers made up that are going to end up in the trash anyways, because that's ultimately where they're going to go. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't understand that. I think, I think it's a good initiative. Um, I think it should be uh, thought out. The legalities of it, I, I won't even touch that because I'm no expert. But I just, I, I, I find it hard to, uh, you know, support something to say, you know, don't put up 20 signs. Uh, go out and get 2,000 flyers made up that are ultimately going to end up in in the landfill. Thank you. No. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bolland, your hand is up. Thank you, Your Worship. Paper flyers are recyclable. Okay. Um, going back to Yarmouth, um, their policy was created by their solicitor. And Yarmouth's policy is much far reaching than ours. Our, theirs covers every form of election, not just municipal. This is just municipal. So. Yarmouth has passed it, so I've got no legal concerns. Again, ours is a much smaller piece of the pie compared to Yarmouth. Um, flyers are recyclable. Um, you know, if there's a feeling from uh, Councillor Savage that she'd be happy with 10 signs versus six, um, that could be compromised, but I think uh, it'll be shame to uh, have new candidates spend hundreds of dollars on dozens of signs, et cetera where they go to the landfill and uh, we're trying to do the right thing and, <clears throat> and put a green side to, uh, to the town. So I'm not sure if Councillor Savage is firm on six or 
Uh, that's and not what we're looking at tonight. We're, uh, we're at second reading and second reading of uh, the bylaw as it was uh, went to the public hearing. Uh, Councillor Savage, do you have something new to add? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Gerard, you have something new to, or uh, Deputy Mayor, sorry, do you have something new? Thank you. Uh, just just yeah. something very small and, and actually um, uh, Jillian York in, in her letter touched on it. Um, the timing of this when people are supposed to be social distancing and everything else, um, and I understand the Facebook thing and, and everything, um, I, I just, I, I think it's ill-timed as well. Uh, when people are restricted or probably a lot of people just aren't going to go uh, door to door. Um, you know, it, and not only that, but for the six or seven of us that are already on council that many in Kensal are familiar with, um, you know, we've, we've got an advantage right there for anyone that, uh, that, that tunes in. But uh, I, I just, I think it's ill time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there any further discussion? Is there anything new to bring to the table? None, you're ready for the question. The question is on adoption of the motion to approve second reading of the amendment to the LUB for munici municipal election signs. Councillor Bolland, how say you? Yes. Deputy Mayor, how say you? No. Councillor Pulsifer, how say you? No. Councillor Maxwell, how say you? Yes. Councillor Savage, how say you? No. I say no, the motion is defeated. All right, moving on to our next piece of uh, unfinished business, council approval of the Cornwallis Street Naming Committee. So at the 13th of July, 2020 council meeting, council ratified a motion to rename Cornwallis Street. Um, I've provided you with, uh, with a memorandum here for creation of an ad hoc committee uh, with regards to the Cornwallis Street. And this information uh, comes from our current uh, policies. And additionally, I was fortunate enough to sit, sit in a webinar uh, with the NSFM uh, with regards uh, to the elimination of discrimination and racism and uh, took some of the best practices that uh, Truro, New Glasgow and uh, several other uh, towns have used uh, in creating uh, this type of committee. Uh, so uh, right now the committee will be led by uh, Councillor Bolland with staff support from the Director of Recreation and it should be composed. Um, this is the minimum. It can be more uh, once the, the group gets together as follows through public advertising. A representative from our Indigenous community, another member of council, and at least two community mem members. In consideration of the naming, we must adhere to our current recognition policy, G67, for street naming. The other thing we should be mindful of is the Nova Scotia Civic Address User's Guide, which not only speaks to naming conventions, uh, but uh, as well uh, the 911 emergency, geolocating and addressing. Uh, there's also the HRM study, the report on the task force of commemoration of Edward Cornwallis and the recognition and commemoration of Indigenous history should be reviewed for its historical context and uh, process recommendations. Best practices, again, I've already spoke uh, to those and uh, as well a, um, a, a fairly uh, loose list of, uh, of how to hold it and no less than two public meetings uh, should be held and the recommendation must come back to council. Uh, there will be no um, um, recommendations uh, made on the fly in, uh, in public consultation. It is only through council that uh, the recommendation can be approved. Um, as well, I've provided you with a link uh, as the Town of Kentville is a member of the Coalition of Inclusive uh, Municipalities 
And with that uh, goes some very uh, big initiatives, such as improving our practices to promote social inclusion, establishing policies to eradicate all forms of racism and discrimination, and to promote human rights and diversity. So my recommendation is that Council approve the formation of an ad hoc committee to consider the renaming of the Cornwallis Street detailed herein. If I could have a motion, please. So moved. Councillor Ballin, thank you. And a seconder? Second. Thank you, Councillor Savage. So it has been moved and seconded that Council approve the formation of an ad hoc committee to consider the renaming of Cornwallis Street as detailed herein. Is there any discussion? Councillor Maxwell, your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm looking at the makeup of this committee and uh, right now as it sits, there would be, if two people are from the community, let's say Kentville, it would be one, two, three, four, five, five, uh, colonialists to one indigenous person, um, which I don't think is a, is a good makeup. Um, I'm thinking that there should be more than one person from the indigenous community uh, sitting, on that, uh, sitting on that committee. And um, I, would, I would like to relook at the structure of, of that committee. So uh, Councillor Maxwell, these were minimums. And uh, the way that, uh, that I came to these numbers is, uh, is based on the HRM uh, distribution of, of membership. Uh, so we also uh, have um, a desire to assist us uh, with uh, the Kings County uh, diversity uh, personnel and bringing more people on, but this is the minimum. I still think the minimum is two minimum of Indigenous um, population. I think five to one is, uh, is, is not a good, uh, good ratio. So you, I, I guess, you make this sound like it would be five, five people against one person. And, and that's not the intent. This is, this is a committee where each member of the committee is equal standing and, and has a voice. And what we are bringing is a voice from the Indigenous community to, to the table. That I would like to see more diversity on that. So if you want to say that two community members are one from the African uh, Nova Scotia community and one from the... Um, international uh, multicultural community i would be happy with that but uh, when i'm just looking at a five to one um, possibility of five i'll call ourselves like myself a, a colonialist um, to one indigenous um, i think that's not diversity all right so you think there should be more diversity yeah. so the numbers Pushing this to our our lead, our uh, to Councillor Ballin and our Director of Recreation, along with the diversity person from Kings County, uh, to do the terms of reference and the makeup of the team, and then go looking for uh, people within our our community. Uh, is that is that satisfactory to you? I, I, that would be satisfactory. I, I would like to see um, what they recommend. I would like to see more diversity in that minimum group, for sure. All right. Yeah. Councillor Ballin, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you. A couple of concerns. Um, my original intention was to have a candidate from the Mi'kmaq community, either from Goose Cap or Cambridge First Nations. Um, and um, I don't want to weigh, weigh this down with more than six or seven or eight people. Um, Mayor, so you mentioned at least five people. Um, it's, it's not gonna be rocket science to come up with a name, but we have a small group of five or six people to come up with a name that, that could be presented to council. That is, is my intention, but it's not something that's gonna take forever to get done. Um, I'm not against diversity, but I just wanna have something efficient and uh, that's going to move forward quickly. Um, so maybe we need, you said at least five people. So where are you going to draw the line? A 10 or 
12 or eight or I think we need to have some perimeters here. Thank you. That, that is, that's for you as the lead. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that this is one of uh, these, uh, these items where we say uh, uh, this is a 30 day fix. This is not a 30 day fix. We must be uh, compassionate uh, to all members of our community, uh, regardless of, of where they come from. And, and everyone needs to be able to have their voice on this matter. So uh, being fast is definitely not the reason uh, for, for doing this. And, uh, and if, uh, if, if that's how you see this, this falling out, then, then I'm afraid that, that we already have a, a I guess a, a, a big difference of, uh, of opinions uh, because this, this is a huge step forward for our community and we must be respectful to all of our members of our community. So are you still prepared to take this on and hear the voices of that community regardless of how many there are? I certainly am. I'm just, I, now I've got clarification on perimeters. So. Um, I'm not saying get it done fast in 30 days. It's going to take up to six months, but I, I don't think it should take a long time. We, once we form a committee, we can meet and something will come before council probably October, November, the new council. So, Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Savage, you have your hand up. Thank you, Worship. Um, just to sort of echo what you said, I, I do think it's about being sensitive to the community in its entirety. And I think the representation, uh, the composition of the committee is, is very, very important. I think in terms of having the community members, that's very important. I think it would be nice to have somebody from the business community as well, in terms of the changing of the name uh, will impact uh, the businesses. It would like it would be nice to have their voice at the table as well. Um, I sit on uh, Diversity Kings Committee, and as you alluded to, Brittany Mastroni has uh, agreed to take part in this somehow. Whether it means having uh, some folks or two or three folks from our Diversity Kings Committee, we have good representation there. Uh, so that's just my thought on it. Thank you. Thank you. So the intent, the intent of this was to start the, the conversation and to be the minimums, not, uh, not to strap anybody down or uh, slow down uh, the process. Uh, and, and Diversity Kings has, uh, has been very generous in, uh, in their offer of, uh, of assistance uh, to the Director of uh, Recreation. Uh, Councillor Maxwell, I see your hand is still up. Did you have uh, something to add? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, now, item six, uh, you have uh, expanded the duties of, of the committee from just looking at a name, uh, naming of a street, um, to include much more. And, and that's why I'm thinking that we need to have more diversity um, on, that, on that committee in minimum, in minimum representation. Um, because to me, this, this policy is, is more than just um, naming the street, uh, this committee. It could end up uh, looking at other issues as well with uh, item number six. I don't know if that's your intention, uh, Mayor Snow, or not, but uh, I think uh, it, it reads that way. And so that's why I'm, I'm adamant that we, we make sure that the makeup of that um, includes uh, a very much a diverse community. Excellent, thank you. So if we, uh, if we add uh, in paragraph two, that um, should be composed as follows through public advertising, representation from the indigenous community, members of council, and a diverse community members. Yes. Now, paragraph six is purely a statement of fact that Kentville is a member of this inclusive municipalities and that we have committed to these stated initiatives. So it's not adding to this ad hoc, but as you say, this ad hoc committee could come up with, with 
starting our own or pushing more towards the diversity kings because we are part of uh, part of that so that gives us a very broad uh, window on uh, on how we do our business okay. so with that modification of adding more diversity and as well from uh, Councillor Savage, the business community. So, uh, so if, if we put uh, under uh, item C, diverse, diversity and business, uh, then Councillor Bolland and the Director of Recreation can get the ball rolling with the advertisements that go out for the committee members. Is that satisfactory? Good with me. Yes. All right, are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the formation of an ad hoc committee to consider the renaming of Corn Cornwallis Street as detailed herein. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Bolland, how say you? Yes. Councillor Maxwell, how say you? Yes. Councillor Pulsifer, how say you? Yes. Councillor Savage, how say you? And I say yes, the motion is carried. All right, our next item of business is the Visitor Information Center. And uh, Councillor Savage, uh, you brought that to the table. If uh, I'll give you the floor, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, at our last council meeting, we had discussed a little bit about the VIC and uh, Lindsay had given us an idea as to where things stood with it. Um, and talked about a potential, I think, radio station as well that would possibly be set up so that when people were approaching Kenville, they could tune into the radio station. But I understand that will probably take considerable time to actually all, you know, to get everything related to that set up. So I don't think that's really too likely over the next couple of months. Thinking in terms of, you know, the staycations, we're still in our Atlantic bubble. So I know a lot of people are traveling through the, the respective provinces within that bubble. And I'm just trying to get a sense of where we're at with, uh, with BIC and, and, and getting that open and, and if we're in a position to open it. CAO? CAO, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Savage. Um, well, it's, it's actually, um, I was trying to um, get a feel around the whole province of, of what where the BICs were and, and they're actually all over the place in that you know some are open some are closed some of actually the more prominent ones that we thought would be open are actually not open some of them are virtual so it's it's kind of a it's not a one-size-fits-all this year so um, I know that we have had conversations with our manager about doing some virtual whereby you know the phone rings into her and and she can still do some guidance with people and help them with information and that um, at the present time we are using the vic as part of our parks department in order to social distance our staff but um uh, I spoke with with um, the recreation director, and and we can we can uh, we can move that staff around. We're pretty confident that we can accommodate them in another building. So um, we may have to do just a a temporary slight modification. I have some questions out with regards to how. Um, things are being given out or, or, or help reservations, those kinds of things are doing. So I think for the most part, it'll, it'll be the wearing of masks. Um, and um, it'll, we will only be able to employ one person, the manager, because, you know, we really didn't have it in the budget, but I think we can squeeze that off and potentially maybe um, open maybe uh, Wednesday to Sunday for a few hours each day, um, you know, but it's, you know, whatever council feels, you know, I, I, I'm thinking we, we can be somewhat accommodating there, so. Um, you know, are we in a position to, oh, like, do we have sufficient brochures, things like that to? We have some things, you know, I mean, we don't have an overabundance and, 
we don't have any new doers or dreamers. We, they're old from, from last year on, um, you know, but we have a few things. Um, there seems to be uh, um, this year, the reservations, uh, the central, obviously the central reservations line is not, is not functioning. So, you know, a lot of times in the past, our VIC uh, members would help our visitors make hotel reservations uh, using, you know, that line, but that's not, that's not functioning now. And, and so, um, you know, like I said, and we, we certainly could do sort of a bit of a virtual whereby, you know, the phone, the number that's published rings directly to the uh, manager who can assist over the phone with information and phone numbers and directions and those kinds of things. And, and that's one thing that she's uh, very willing to, to do. Um, so I, I basically, I would recommend that that would be the, the route that we would take at this point because we're, we're pretty much, you know, a month or so because after the Labor Day weekend, obviously, you know, things always slow down when the children go back to school and, and they'll be going back on the 8th of September. Um, so that, that's certainly, that would be the, the easiest and quickest way that we could offer assistance. Thank you, CAO. Uh, Councillor Pulsford, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, would there be a, a problem ordering the new doers and dreamers um, now? Um, they're, they are out and I know they are at neighboring VICs. So um, if there was someone, you know, our manager in the, in the VIC, she would, uh, even if she could hand out those, the uh, up-to-date Nova Scotia maps and just answer local questions um, in the area, you know, Kent Phil and, I, I don't see any reason why we can't order um, some doers and dreamers. I would have to double check that with um, with uh, Lindsay and the manager. But um, I mean, if other some other places do have them, I, unless they have a limited number and their supply has already been distributed, um, we could. Uh, did Councillor Pulsifer's the video has frozen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilor Maxwell, you have your hand up. You're on mute. You're on mute. Thank you. Uh, CAO, uh, we probably don't know this, but do we know who was being serviced by the VIC the most through last year? Was it people from the Atlantic region? Was it people from outside the Atlantic region? Um, because I'm thinking that you know, if I was gonna go on a vacation um, in the Atlantic bubble, I could get most of the information I want right on the internet. And uh, I could uh, look up if I'm going to Moncton, uh, where to stay in Moncton and things to do in Moncton. So, you know, I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, if there's a huge demand for for us to be open just for the Atlantic bubble. And so I'm not sure if you any of you saw it or not, but there was a, a news report on the weekend uh, by New Brunswick uh, Tourism Visitor Information Centers, and they were all stating that um, 90 to 95 percent of of what they were seeing that that did access the centers that were open were from New Brunswick and they've seen very few a few Nova Scotia um, uh, they asked uh, I believe it was the Algonquin uh, Hotel I believe was one of the ones that were interviewed and their their traffic is very low in with the visitor information centers and um, their tourism outside the province is extremely low, but but again, that was that was New Brunswick, that wasn't Nova Scotia. Um, so I can't really answer um, what it is or what it would be. Um, you know, it's a lot of 
local this year. Obviously, people are still a little nervous. Councilor Pulsifer is logging back onto her, uh, her computer. She needed to do a restart. Uh, Deputy Mayor, your hand is up. Thank you, Worship. Um, this question's for Kelly. Kelly, what's the status of the VIC manager right now? Well, she's, she, uh, she's, she's uh, working, she has worked a few um, hours for us. Um, just, um, you know, we have had a couple of inquiries and she has helped us with it. But, but the status is, is she's ready if we, if we want her to uh, come on board, she's ready. So are we paying her now? Have no. we been paying her the whole summer? No, 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 no. Um, we don't, she just did a little bit of work for us and we, we paid that. But no, she hasn't been on the payroll. And uh, what I'd like to do, and maybe this isn't the right time to do it, but since uh, Councillor Savage brought it up, I'd make a motion that we open the VIC as soon as we can and get what we can out of the rest of the summer. How about if we uh, we wait till we go around? Uh, this will probably just come as direction to staff as opposed to uh, the requirement for a motion. Uh, Councillor yeah. Boland, your hand is up. Yeah, good comments. Um, I support it opening. However, I'm not interested in paying staff to sit, uh, sit at the VIC 40 hours a week and we have two or three visitors a day. From a business standpoint, I'm, we probably don't have the stats, but I wonder what Again, this is last year pre-COVID, but what days of the week and what hours of the day we had the most traffic? I mean, staff should have stats that on Monday, Tuesday, Monday to Friday, it was busy at lunchtime till three o'clock and then it was dead, that sort of thing. Um, again, we only have a month left basically in the summer. Um, any information from uh, about that CO or any sense of that? Well, we, yes, we do have those stats. Um, we, we have sort of done a little bit of looking at them, but um, we will only have the one staff member, so we will only be able to open, you know, maybe 40 hours or, or less. But we were thinking, it seems to be the traffic tendencies were, you know, Wednesdays to Sundays. So people tend to travel more around the weekends. Um, we did contact a couple of other VICs who are open and they're doing the Wednesday to Sunday. Um, some of them are in conjunction with um, the local museum. So they're, 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 they're housing in the same building in some places, but, uh, you know, I would suggest that it would be, you know, a maximum would be five days and, and, you know, because we, with only having one employee, um, then I would suggest, you know, we open, we look at Wednesdays to Sundays, uh, potentially, but, but we can, we can pull those numbers. All right, thank you. Uh, I think this marries up well with uh, the commitment that uh, Kings County has made to AVCC with uh, $100,000 in, uh, in tourism funding uh, to get people to come to the Valley. I know that a lot of people uh, come looking uh, for something different to do. Uh, you know, they, they kind of, they, they know that there's apples here in the Valley, but they go to the Tourist Bureau to find something that they might not have known about. So if you know where you're going, going on the internet is, is easy peasy. But if you're looking for that special thing, or, um, you know, our Annapolis Valley map is uh, the one that ABCC uh, did uh, with the Valley Wren last year is one of the greatest maps because it actually gets you on the back roads that a normal map doesn't get uh, or that your GPS probably won't get you to. So this doesn't take you to the swamp. It actually takes you to, uh, uh, to the places that you might want to go. Uh, Councillor Savage. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of comments. I mean, you know, we, we relocated the VIC, you know, we, we paid to, to upgrade it. We're in an Atlantic bubble. We have a manager, uh, you know, if the budget provides for it, uh, you know, look at some of the trends from last year. I think it's super, super important to have it open uh, this year. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, yes, I'm back. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I just wanted to add that um, several times now at the Heritage Center, people have come in looking for the VIC. Uh, is it open? Do you have any local brochures? And uh, I was not able to forward them uh, to our BIC. Um, one wanted to know generally Kings County, so I sent her to Berwick. Um, anyway, there is activity and I just wanted to make that, that mention known. So. Excellent, excellent. So CAO, based on the information that uh, Council has provided you with, uh, you can take this for action? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Once we have things set, um, I will send out a message to everyone uh, letting you know hours of operation, days, that type of thing. Right, thank you. All right, we're moving on to our uh, reports and um, we'll start with uh, Councillor Bolland. Thank you, Worship. I'm reading from my iPhone. My printer died a while ago, so excuse my, uh, I'm going to max this out. So, um, Last council meeting attended uh, was June 29th. Our last uh, CAC was July 13th. Um, under committee meeting attendance, uh, I attended Valley Waste on July 15th. Um, we'll come back to that later. Uh, Kent full events and synopsis. So we had a public hearing on the municipal sign uh, initiative, uh, as well as the Stone Ridge uh, rezoning application. Um, some miscellaneous comments. Um, I applied a few couple months ago to the um, FCM climate change leadership uh, program and I was uh, acknowledged as one of four Nova Scotians to be accepted on that uh, group. There's 40 of us around the country and it simply involves um, online workshops and assignments so that's something I'll be doing from my home. And there's uh, no cost involved at all to taxpayers for this. So um, number of uh, phone interviews with Pam Berman uh, from CBC News regarding the Cornwall Street Initiative and the Campaign Sign Initiative. Down to Valley Waste, uh, we had a very brief meeting with our GM and staff. Um, the uh, management bylaw might be on uh, CEO Rice's desk or it's coming soon that's finally been tweaked and massaged by the county kings and legal um, the um, cottage bins in what we call cottage country they're slowly being uh, diverted to uh, roadside pickups uh, there's been some education on that really good reception by cottage owners and associations so that's moving forward and there will be a fall cleanup in uh, late september and that is my report. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. De Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship, and, and I do apologize. I didn't think of texting it because I couldn't figure out how to get it to my phone. Um, anyways, uh, last council meeting was June 29th. Uh, last uh, CAC was uh, July 13th. Um, July 8th, I attended the emergency uh, meeting uh, for the PACE funding, uh, July 20th, the REMAC meeting where we spoke about the uh, uh, COVID-19 and uh, fire ban. Um, and I also attended the public hearing on the, uh, the two things that are coming to, uh, to council. And that is my report, thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Councilor Maxwell. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'll apologize to my colleagues and the public for not having a, uh, a report in. Um, to be honest, I've uh, been flat out uh, nursing my mom and uh, I didn't even realize that I didn't have it in until Monday. And uh, I was just too tired. I just didn't do it. I've been to everything I'm supposed to be at. Uh, the last council meeting, June 29th, uh, the last council advisory, uh, July 13th. I attended the public hearing on uh, July 22nd and the council emergency meeting on July the 8th. And my other committees have not been um, up and running right now. So thank you. Excellent, thank you. Councillor Savage. Uh, thank you, Worship. So same as the rest of the folks, last council meeting attended was in June 29th and CAC was July 13th. 
uh, July 8th was Investment Advisory Committee. We did review the report and recommendations with our investment advisor and portfolio was down minimally at that time, about 2.5%. COVID-19 certainly has prompted discussions around our investment policy statement. And we've looked at some amendments that we may wish to make um, that would allow us to explore the concept more of income and growth within the portfolio. So uh, it's looking like a slight modification will be sent off to the minister for approval, um, which will amend our equity position within the portfolio mix. It will increase it slightly. I don't recall exactly what it is, your worship, but I think it might have been three or four percent, something along those lines. Um, July 16th was regional sewer, so there were no updates with the work plan other than the asset management plan is coming along nicely. We reviewed the compliance reports and PepsiCo reported on some of the changes that they're looking at making to bring them into uh, compliance, uh, primarily with their BODs, I think it was, as opposed to TSS. We uh, discussed the compliance letter from the Department of Environment regarding some of the contraventions at various levels and those, con those discussions will be ongoing. June 29th was an audit committee meeting where we met with the accountant to review the March 31st, 2020 financials and our accountant was very vocal and, and noticed, noting that we were the first of uh, all his municipalities to have all of our information in. So we have our March 31st financials done and approved in a timely manner and we are considered the gold standard and amongst our peers and our financial condition, uh, our FCI's index is considered excellent. We are leading edge with automated controls and we have excellent internal controls. July 6th with Diversity Kings uh, where there were quite a number of discussions around the renaming of Cornwallis Street and there really is an opportunity as I said previously in the meeting to do some really great work here. There actually was some discussion around uh, a regional type model similar to what we have with Remo. We had a few discussions around the Indian Act and the work that it would take to replace the such act. Uh, t very time consuming, uh, but obviously work that needs to be done there. We had a couple of presenters as well. On July 8th, I attended the PACE meeting. Uh, we voted not to entertain the program due to the financial strain that it could put on the town's finances. And we had a public meeting on July the 22nd, the proposed amendment to the LUB from the R2 zoning to permit schools public to private subject to conditions. And then the, of course the proposed amendment to the LUB to limit the number of political signs to each candidate so that they could erect a maximum of six. June 26th, I attended the Northeast Kings graduating graduation ceremony and prom cruise. And I did that in conjunction with my role on the Kentel Rotary Club. And uh, thanks to Kathy Bootlayer, et cetera, who put together a wonderful celebration in conjunction with uh, those who um, gave their support from the town of Kentville, the staff. It was a fantastic evening. I'm sure Mayor Snow will mention it as well because she was there and spoke. And that is my report. Thank you. Councillor Pulsford. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I also attended the last council meeting, June 29th, and the last council advisory meeting, which is also called a council meeting now anyways, on July the 13th. June 25th, I um, had the Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting uh, held via Zoom. Uh, discussion was held re-accessibility issues, ex especially relating to parking and accessible meeting spaces at Town Hall. Uh, the committee is reaching out to the public to let them know this committee is here to listen. Uh, committee members are encouraged to reach out to their own community to uh, attend these engagement sessions. Um, we're going to start brainstorming for a community accessibility workshop, i.e. location, um, have a procedure for it, and a possible speaker for uh, the next meeting to be Cynthia Bruce. Um, July 8th, emergency council meeting held with regards to the PACE program. Um, July 22nd, attended the public hearing uh, on the two proposed amendments to the land use bylaw. And uh, just an added miscellaneous note, um, on July 13th, the Kentville Library opened uh, its doors with the necessary COVID protocol in place. Hours will be the same. 
but there are, uh, are a few limitations. Um, these are as to the number of visitors and visits will be limited to 30 minutes a day for each person. And there's a limit of 10 visitors at one time in the library. So uh, the doors are open and things are moving along and uh, people are glad that it has opened up finally. So that's my report. Excellent, thank you. And uh, for my report, uh, it's uh, all the, uh, the usual uh, stuff. Um, a couple of uh, interesting ones. Uh, the Valley Wren continues to meet uh, for a regional recovery task force and uh, lots of really great programs out there, particularly with grants. There is free money on the table. So if you are uh, a business person, uh, please have a look at these, uh, these things. There's one out there called uh, Digital Adoption. I talked about it uh, the last meeting and I'm going to talk about it again because they've changed the criteria. The other thing is I've told uh, several of our retailers downtown about this and even though they had their websites set up before this program came into uh, into force, they're still allowed to um, to purchase new um, hardware and software uh, as uh, as part of that. So it's uh, it's digital adoption. It's through NSBI. You can get a grant of. Uh, up to $10,000, which is uh, equal to 50% of uh, what you've spent. So whether you've gone on a website, uh, uh, created uh, Shopify or whatever, uh, whatever you've done to get your business out there online, uh, it's really uh, a really great program. So that's NSBI, Nova Scotia Business Incorporated. Uh, just Google their uh, website, NSBI, and, uh, and for grants, uh, you can get up to $10,000. So uh, don't leave the money on the table because right now it's undersubscribed. Uh, King's Mayors, we continue to, uh, to meet and to talk about uh, our economic uh, recovery in the region and uh, major issues uh, facing each, uh, each municipality. And uh, I have to say that we're in, uh, we're in pretty good shape down here in the Valley. Uh, King's Remo, again, we had a huge COVID-19 uh, update. One of the things that I'll say is that uh, people have talked about uh, the fact that we closed down the economy and we self-isolated so that we could protect grandma and grandpa. Guess what? That's not the way it's rolling out right now. More and more young people are faced with the COVID and it's uh, because they're just not paying attention to everything that's been put out there. Um, in addition, we talked about wildfires. This is a very dry year. Uh, funny thing is, is I was running on the trail uh, the other day and this man drove by me on a bicycle smoking a cigarette. Uh, so why you would smoke in the bush is beyond me. Why you would smoke in Kenville is beyond me. Why you would smoke is beyond me. But I just put it out there. It is a very, very dry year. And I didn't realize he had a cigarette until he went by me because then I could smell it. Um, as well, this is hurricane season. Uh, we're already up to H as far as named storms. So there have been a lot of storms this year. And as well, you know the number of heat advisories that are out there. So uh, um, you, you must take care in, uh, in these times. Uh, on 16th of July, we went for a drive with, uh, with Spike and delivered uh, thank you notes up to the folks uh, on Milne Drive uh, for their petition participation uh, during the float by. So it was kind of one of those, uh, those fun days. And um, I've, uh, I've been uh, doing some Zoom conferences, uh, webinars uh, with the NSFM, uh, which are uh, actually very, uh, very informative. So if you have the time, uh, typically it's on Wednesday mornings uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, so that is my report. So if I could have a motion to accept the councillor and mayor's reports as presented. So moved. Thank you. And seconded, Councillor Maxwell, I saw your hand. Yes. So it's been moved and seconded that Councillor and Mayor's reports be accepted as presented. All those in favor? Those opposed? The motion is carried. I noticed that uh, we've lost Councillor uh, Pulsifer again. We're having some hinky uh, um, 
electrons tonight by the appearance of it. So we have one piece of correspondence. It's from King's Historical Society, uh, thanking us for the grant uh, given to the society and ongoing support uh, is greatly appreciated and truly makes a difference. I'm not sure uh, of the museum's hours uh, because of the COVID, uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you can find out uh, on their website. So moving on to our new business, the first piece of new business is uh, council remuneration. Uh, and on, on the year of a municipal election, we are required to do a review of the remuneration paid to uh, members of our council. And uh, before you, you have the uh, the information. Staff is not making a recommendation on this, but what they have uh, provided us with, if you look at uh, uh, page, uh, page one of one, uh, the uh, council remuneration, so you see what our remuneration was and what all the other towns around us were. And uh, so basically, they have, uh, they have put the same, the same numbers in. So I will put that out there for a no change to current uh, remuneration. Uh, so I, um, we have a, a motion for council to approve the council remuneration policy as presented. If I could have a motion. Uh, Council I'll Maxwell, do. did you want to speak before we go to motion or? Go to motion. Okay. I'll move that Thank your worship. You. Thank you, Councillor Savage. And a seconder? I'll second it. Thank you, Councillor Pulsifer. It's been moved and seconded that Council approve the Council remuneration policy as presented. Uh, Councillor Maxwell, your hand is up. Yes, I was just uh, wondering how my colleagues uh, felt and, and, and probably the same as me, okay, but uh, um, the Council remuneration seems to be in line with uh, most everybody else, but un unfortunately, Your Worship, um, the uh, the mayor's is uh, is uh, a little bit high compared to some comparable communities. Although Bridgewater seems to have blown up their uh, their mayor's salary by uh, thirty thousand dollars almost uh, from October twenty twenty to November twenty twenty. Um, I just noticed that that um, ours was was high compared to uh, Amherst, New Glasgow. Um, and it, it was Bridgewater, but like I said, they've just blown theirs up. So just to, just point that out and just uh, maybe you can speak to it, it, how you feel about it or whatever. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bolland, uh, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Risha. I think the numbers are fine. Uh, the council, um, looking at those numbers, there's a slight increase, uh, CEO, um, for November 2020, I assume. Is that cost of living index or it's about a hundred dollar ish yes yes Councillor Boland it is cost of living okay thank you all right is there any uh further uh comments are you ready for the question the question is on adoption of the motion to approve council remuneration policy as presented deputy mayor Councillor Bolland? Yes. Councillor Maxwell? Yes. Councillor Pulsfer? Yes. Cal Councillor Savage? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes. I say yes. The motion is carried. All right, moving on to our uh, next uh, piece of business is our meeting procedures. Uh, so as you know, this is our last meeting for uh, uh, until we come back in September and um, we're not sure what's going to happen uh, between uh, now and September and without having to call a special meeting to uh, adopt a, uh, a different uh, manner of doing business what I have prepared uh, is um, is a request that uh, we have we, we can return to business as usual if uh, 
municipal affairs stays the uh, Zoom meeting uh, protocols only. Uh, so the, um, the request has been on the desk uh, at uh, municipal affairs now. This is the third week on. Councils are requesting to be permitted to meet in person or in Zoom, dependent on whether or not a council has the ability to socially distance uh, in a council chamber. So I would, uh, I would like to uh, have us be prepared regardless of, uh, of what comes out. And that's uh, what this motion is, is the council return to business as per the G70 meeting policy if the ministerial order of the 22nd of March 2020 is stayed or modified. A move. Thank you. And a seconder? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded the council. Sorry. It's been moved and seconded the council return to business as per the G70 meeting policy if the ministerial order of the 22nd of March 2020 is stayed or modified by the next scheduled meeting of council. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Maxwell. I just, uh, I'm just wondering if uh, we should make a, a, a comment there that, that we're, we should be wearing masks if we're, we're at, the, uh, at the council table. Um, within, uh, we, I, I know in ours, unless we're drastically changing the way that the structure is, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to maintain the six foot distance. And so if we're within two feet, we, we should be wearing masks. And I don't think that's going to change by September. So I'm just wondering if there should be a statement there saying that we would return, but we would be wearing masks if we're in chambers. I, I guess what I'm saying is the only part that we're, we're, we're not doing any of the medical part of this, that all still pertains. What we're looking at is the ability to meet in the chamber. So we would still have to meet under the criteria established by the Department of Health, okay. but we would go back to being allowed to meet in chambers. Is there any further discussion? So are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to return to business as per the G70 policy if the ministerial order of 22nd of March 2020 is stayed or modified by the next scheduled meeting of council. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Bolland, how say you? Yes. Councillor Maxwell, how say you? Yes. Councillor Pulsifer, how say you? Yes. Councillor Savage, how say you? Yes. I say yes, the motion is carried. Council has confidential uh, business, uh, which must be conducted in a closed session. We require a motion to go into a closed session to discuss the agenda item. We will be returning to Facebook Live um, for a motion uh, after, uh, after we, uh, we complete our business. Uh, so if I could have a motion, please. Deputy Mayor, and a seconder. Okay. Councillor Ballin, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council move into a closed session. The question is on adoption of the motion to move into a closed session. All those in favor? Those opposed, the motion is carried. Thank you. And the time is uh, 5.32.